so nice to see you. I'm so happy you're both here. I love this. A very international it couch. Is. It is. My absolute it favourites. Is. Yeah. So happy you're here. Maria, you, you went to some of the fancy Oscar parties I did. this past weekend. Obviously, last year you were nominated. Is it more of is it more fun attending those things when you're not nominated? Well, how could I know? I wasn't able to go last year. Of course, because there was we didn't no... have them. <gasps> Maybe it is, to be honest, because you don't have the pressure of being exactly the place that you have to be, talking with the people that you have to talk, and all the important things to say. So you yeah. just have fun. Yeah, did you have a good weekend? Was it fun? Yes, I had the best weekend. I mean, Stephen, one of the first times you came out to Los Angeles was when you and Ricky Gervais were nominated for two Golden Globes for the UK office. Yes. It might remember this being just the biggest story at home, that the show had been nominated. It must have been an incredible moment in that your life. That was in the life. days when the Golden Globes meant something. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, when they happened. When they happened. Yeah. When, you know, when they were respected. Yes. And, uh, yes, we had been nominated and we came out... Um, and they picked us up in a limo from the oh. airport. That was unbelievable. We were like people on a bachelorette weekend, just like, <laughs> is this water free? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. And um, we went to the ceremony, and um, the BBC beforehand had said, there's no way you're going to win. There's mm. no chance, so just enjoy the night. And miraculously, we won. Yeah. Um, and the, if you watch... Thank you. And rightly really so. But if you... But if you watch the uh, if you watch the telecast footage, you can see the cameraman sort of searching for us as our names are called. Yeah. I have no idea. And you sort of see me kind of slowly stand up, <laughs> and then everyone else, and they're all about you know three feet shorter sure. than me. And we went to the stage, and the announcer had never heard of us, and obviously just took a guess and thought you know because Gervais is actually a French Canadian name. Mm. So the announcer says, uh, "Coming to the stage, Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant." <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and we went up there. And I swear to God, I looked out and there was Clint Eastwood about three rows in, and I saw Clint Eastwood just turn to the person next to him and went, who the f are they? <laughs> <laughs> it was unbelievable. I thought, well, no, he's fair enough. It was an amazing night. Yeah, it was it an was incredible good. thing. I mean, Maria, since, since you were last here, uh, and I've bumped into you, socially, because you've moved to Los Angeles. I did. How is it going? How's life? Has it been a culture shock moving here? You know, the most shocking part is that everybody is extremely happy. Right. And... <laughs> And I think I'm becoming a happy person as well. Yeah. <laughs> so. Do you enjoy it when you come out here? When you come out to LA? Because this must have been I a do. couple of years since you've been here. Yes, I haven't been here for two years. It's my first right. time in two years. But, uh, no, I love to see... No, I, you're right, because people are optimistic, they are positive. There's so much creativity in this town, which is lovely to be around. So many smart, funny, talented, brilliant people. Uh, uh, and great-looking people. I just... I always fit in. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, yeah. when I'm here. But you do have a very distinctive look. You must get recognised <laughs> everywhere you go. Is that a euphemism for weird? No, it's not. No, I just think... I just think lots, like, lots of people would put a cap on, mask, and but like with you, I, I think I'd spot you from a long way away. Like, oh, that's Stephen <laughs> Merchant. What's, where's the most unusual place you've been recognised? I, I was once, I was once in uh, Croatia, in Dubrovnik, mm. where they shoot a lot of uh, Game of Thrones. Yeah. And, um, I'm, and I had to eat oysters for this filming. And just before I ate this oyster, someone said, you know, if you have a bad oyster, the pain is so intense, you will never eat another oyster again. Oh, wow. And I thought, well, that can't be right, can it? And I ate this oyster, and my God, James, f about four hours later, I was <laughs> on this hotel bed in pain, the likes of which you... I was just screaming, I will never eat an oyster again! Yeah. And you know how normally, if you have food poisoning, it comes out of one end or the other? I'm, These yes. oysters would not leave. Right. <laughs> they were like my parents at Christmas. Your parents They were... At they, they, were they, they were... <laughs> they just would not go. And, and I'm in terrible pain, and in the end, I said, um, you have to call a doctor. And they called this doctor out, and this guy comes to the room, about 2 a.m., and, uh, and he says, I think, yeah, I'm going to need to give you a muscle relaxant because you've got stomach cramps. Right. He says, uh, lean over and drop your pyjamas. Right. So, all right, so I sort of get on the bed and I sort of, you know, drop the pyjamas. <laughs> and he gets out this bloody great syringe and he's walking towards me and he goes, are you Stephen Merchant? <laughs> and, <I'm... laughs> and, and I was thinking, did he just recognise me by my ass? Yeah. <laughs> Is that what I'm known for in Dubrovnik? Am I like the Croatian Kim Kardashian? <laughs> and, and he gives me this injection, and then, uh, and then and I'm sorry, thanks very much. And he's on the way at the door, and he goes, um, I don't suppose I could get a selfie. <gasps> wow. Thought, Is that right? You surely the new Hippocratic Oath should be no selfies with patients. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I sort of, OK, thanks. Yeah, and I had this photo with him. And then the next morning, very sweetly, he knocked on the door. 
and opened it. I thought he wants me to sign a DVD. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, he'd come back to apologise. Oh, lovely. what a nice lovely song. Yeah, he realised it wasn't appropriate, and he'd come back. And he'd yeah, it's very sweet of him. So, um, so I, I, I forgive him entirely. But <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> that must be a weird. <laughs> oh, Maria, you, since you've moved here, very difficult to get around. You, but you've started driving lessons. How are you feeling about this? You feel ready? I haven't started, but now when I'm saying it here in front of you, in front of so many people, I am going to start. I promise. It's a breeze. <laughs> You'll be able to do it. You'll be, you don't feel worried about it, do you? You know, I had a friend that said something. You know, it's not the right place to learn how to drive because driving in LA, it's even scarier than being in that room, in that hotel, with that person. And now I'm... Oh, what, in, in the film, when you were in the room with Rudy yeah. Giuliani? No, I think if you can be in a room with Rudy <laughs> Giuliani, you can, you can learn to drive in LA, I'm certain about that. Okay. I then I'm starting it. You, but I believe you've got it. I think you should start your next lesson, <laughs> your first lesson next week. Okay. Ne we, here's the draw. We won't let you back on the show until you can drive. How's that? Deal? Deal. Done. That'll make you do it. There you go. <laughs> now, Stephen, we've got to congratulate you uh, on your brilliant new show, The Outlaws. Oh, it's so fantastic. Yeah. Nominated for a BAFTA yesterday, and rightly so. You're the creator of the show, the star of the show. You directed a lot of the show. It's set in your hometown of Bristol. For anyone who doesn't know, tell us what it's about and who you play. The show is about seven people who've broken the law in different ways, and now they're all doing community service. You know, if you do, like, a DUI or something, and instead of... Um, well, you won't know about this, but you may, maybe one day, if you yeah. pass your test. <laughs> and um, and if, you, if you get done for a crime, you, instead of sending you to prison, sometimes they make you pick up garbage or, or paint a building or something, yeah. instead of prison. And so um, uh, I always thought that was an interesting idea for a, for a TV show, because my parents when I was growing up, were involved with community service. Right. Um, they, they, they supervised the criminals. They weren't criminals themselves. Yeah. I mean, they did, they did a couple <laughs> of bank heists. Sure, James. that's it. Nothing's <laughs> it. And I always thought, that's an interesting area for, for a show. And so, um, yeah, so I play uh, one of the unfortunates. He's a kind of awkward, gangly, nerdy British guy. It was a real stretch. <laughs> um, and, um, and uh, yeah, and then there's like there's a bunch of other brilliant actors playing different characters, including the, the magnificent Christopher Walken. That's right, Christopher Walken. How did you... How did you... Speak, how did you convince Chris Morgan to be part of the show? Um, so, um, yeah, so he lives in the middle of nowhere in Connecticut and he does not have a phone uh, or a cell phone or a, a computer or anything. So we somehow, I think we faxed him the script and he called me up, he said he'd love to have a meeting. So I went up there and I was quite intimidated to meet him because, you know, he's quite a sort of foreboding character. He plays a lot of gangsters. And uh, he opened the door and I wish I could do a Walken impression because the first thing he said to me was, uh, um, would you like some? of this omelette. <laughs> and I just had a giant hotel breakfast. Mm. So I said, no, I'm good for omelette, thanks, Chris. And so we sat down, and someone had told me beforehand, Chris is very comfortable with silence. He's a very thoughtful man, very considered. He asks a lot of questions. So I'm sitting there, and he, he'd ask a question, and, I, and I'd answer, and then he'd just think. And then he'd <laughs> ask another question, and I'd answer, and he'd... It was, like having a, it was like having a Zoom conversation in person. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. you, you, you were never sure if he was thinking or buffering. Yes. <laughs> and, um, and I was there about three and a half hours. By hour three, I was weak from hunger. I said, any of that omelette? <laughs> um, and, uh, and so I ended up sort of in the home of Christopher Walken just eating a very fluffy omelette. Yeah. Um, and, and in the end, he said yes. And he came all the way to England and he did the show. And it's it was absolutely wonderful. And the show yeah. is fantastic.